Hey everybody, my name is Kevin Mackey and we're starting a new video series called Cold Case Review and I've invited a partner in crime in on this one. This is Dr. Maynard, he's the EMS fellow from UC Davis. Matt, why don't you, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah. So, Matthew Maynard, I'm an EMS fellow at UC Davis. I have the privilege to work with Dr. Mackey um, as part of my fellowship program. Part of what I do is uh, work with the, with the fire department and the medics uh, directly, uh, primarily embedded with Metro Fire, but um, also take a look at EMS cases um, that Dr. Mackey might think would be uh, interesting and useful f for me, and then I review a lot of cases that come into UC Davis Medical Center as well. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. So we would be remiss not to thank the uh, men and women of Station 19, Sacramento City Fire Department. We're using their equipment bay today to film. Uh, we may be coming to film in an equipment bay near you, so thank you for for welcoming us into your home. This will be a review of a real case. That's the idea of these cold case reviews is to review real cases that happened that he and I review uh, and then pull some information out of both of them that we think would be useful for the general audience to know and then hopefully at the end of the day we help everybody out there kind of lift their game just a little bit deliver better and better and better quality of EMS. So yeah. we'll have Matt open up today's case. Why don't you take it away Matt? Yeah. Sure, so this is a, a case where EMS was called to respond to a 74-year-old male uh, with the chief complaint of uh, fainting. It says when, when they arrived, they found the patient uh, was, was anxious and he had a really hard time just due to the level of anxiety. They had noticed that when the patient had been sitting on the couch and then started to you know, develop some chest pain and brought this up to the family, which uh, caused them to, to call EMS. The family denies that any other medical or physical complaints other than the chest pain uh, that started just prior to, uh, or didn't have any other medical problems or complaints prior to developing uh, the chest pain. When they did their assessment of him, you know, they didn't see anything particularly wrong on physical assessment, had a normal uh, neurological exam, just the 1 out of 10 chest pain, um, yeah, but didn't have any shortness of breath or, or nausea and vomiting. And so, uh, given that, uh, I'll just kind of go through what they had for their initial vital signs. So, vital signs weren't too abnormal, um, had a, a blood pressure of 160 over 100, his heart rate was at uh, 70, they did a 4 lead initially, which was just showed a sinus rhythm. Uh, he's a little bit tachypnic uh, at the start of 28 uh, and then throughout transport his respiratory rate went, went down to 18 uh, but did continue to have chest pain uh, almost throughout the throughout the call. So the scenario is we got a 70 ish year old male sitting on the couch developed chest pain mm -hmm. then developed anxiety family called EMS EMS arrives from what I remember them telling me is, is that they were met at the door and the wife says he's, he's anxious he's having a panic attack medics got in on that they got the got the information about the chest pain mm -hmm. we're beginning to think about transport and we're at the point we're going to acquire a 12 lead. so on the on the 12 lead here they uh, noticed there's there's some abnormality the 12 lead a little bit unusual in it it read a normal sinus rhythm at a rate of 69 um, but then there's a, a reading here of possible sequence error uh, v3 v4 omitted uh, Have and you ever seen that before, Matt? I've I've never seen that on a on a pre-hospital EKG, so it's a little baffling to me as well. I got to tell you, I mean, between the two of us, probably more than 50 years of EMS experience, neither of us had seen that, um, and so I was really scratching my head too. Yeah. What do you do with that? Like when that happens? Right. So you know, just like we should with any with any EKG that we obtain, you know, take a look at it and then make an interpretation uh, for ourselves. Uh, because it's, you know, yes, there's, it's a sinus rhythm, it's regular, uh, and so, you know, the next thing I'm looking at here is what's the ST segment changes? Is there any signs of ischemia? And if you look here in V1 and V3, there's clear ST segment elevation. Now, it's not, you know, in absolute contiguous leads, but that's a little concerning. Even if you have a patient with a chief complaint of chest pain who doesn't have a, a history of anxiety and... Uh, and he's 70 some odd yeah, years 70 old some, And he's got you know some risk factors. They notice he had high, high blood pressure in their report. He's got hyperlipidemia or high cholesterol. Um, so, but you know, this EKG has got a lot of ST segment elevation. So I would, I would be concerned from a cardiac standpoint that you know maybe something 
cardiac is going on given this EKG. So if they saw that and they saw that there was this lead failure, if you were in the back of the ambulance and you saw what you thought was ST elevation and you weren't getting the interpretation you thought but you thought it may be a STEMI, what would you do to troubleshoot that at that point or would you just transmit that? Yeah, I think the first thing, uh, you know, with this, if I see this like omitted uh, V3, V4, I want to make sure one that my leads are placed correctly um, and so just quickly run through my leads, make sure everything looks like it's in the right pl place. I didn't flip anything and all the precordial leads are looking good. Um, but if I if I had this in a patient with chest pain, you know, I would I would feel like this would be something I'd want to communicate sooner rather than later to my receiving hospital. Um, so this would definitely be a case I think would be reasonable to transmit that EKG, give the report, and in the rundown say, you know, I've got a 74-year-old guy here who's got chest pain, got an EKG, the interpretation is a little strange, not saying star, 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 STEMI, but I'm worried that he could be having a heart attack, so I'm going to transmit the EKG to you now. And I think that'd probably be the, the most reasonable approach in this case uh, to, to just make sure the hospital's work, because heart attack, that's a very time dependent, you know, STEMI is a very time dependent um, uh, event, and the quicker we can get the ball rolling, the better. Um, I'll take you down the back side of that if that's okay. I'll take the yeah. ball and run with it. So uh, we received that patient in the emergency department. I was fortunate enough to be there that day, so I actually did see everything that happened. Uh, when the medics came in, they actually did come up to me and they said, hey doc, this just doesn't look right, but we just didn't know what to do with it. And that's why the message being that if, that if you see something that doesn't look right, it doesn't smell right, go ahead and utilize the transmission. It doesn't always have to be a STEMI to transmit a 12 lead, especially if you're asking for advice, yeah. right? And in this case, their, their sniffers were going off, their spidey senses were tingling, they knew something was wrong, but they just didn't know what to do with it because it hadn't met that star, star, star meet STEMI criteria, right? So yeah. the patient comes in, he does have active chest pain. Our first 12 lead is, is this. Uh, so what you see here is you see ST elevations through V1 all the way through V4. Compared to their 12 lead, you're starting to see some T wave changes in the inferior leads, especially lead three, which is what you didn't necessarily see on their 12 lead, which is what also causes pause. You should begin to see some T wave changes, flattening, or even depression mm -hmm. in the reciprocal leads, which in this case, for an anterior lateral MI, you would expect to find them in the inferior leads. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to see those changes in the inferior leads. We activated the cath lab, and when he was in the cath lab, these are the results of his cath. So as you can see here, there's a section that the arrow's pointing to that says there's a missing vessel. When they go into a cath lab, they generally cannulate the coronary arteries through the artery in your wrist, and they feed a wire up through, and they squirt a little bit of dye, and these are the pictures that you see, and the cardiologist can see real time that there is a vessel that is not filling with dye as would be expected, and that is a complete occlusion of a coronary artery, and in fact, this guy was suffering from a STEMI. So what they do is they float another wire across that that's got a balloon, they open up the vessel, and then they can deploy a stent, and these are the images that show the after where the vessel is now there where you would expect it to be it's completely filled his chest pain got better and he ended up doing well and went home so great job on the medics part for a not getting wooed into the fact that this was just an anxiety attack and a person is in their 70s they recognize the fact that there's chest pain present they acquired the 12 lead appropriately I'm actually pretty pleased with the quality of their 12 lead it didn't yeah. see a lot of wavy baselines right yeah it looks great yeah it looks like a great Great quality 12 lead and but their spidey senses were going off and and you know even as ER docs right and we were both paramedics before mm -hmm. those spidey senses are really valuable yeah. like they they're telling you something and I still use them even now in the emergency mm -hmm. department when something doesn't quite smell right it probably isn't right and you should go looking a little bit further yep Absolutely. And, and, and just to know, like, you know, you're, if you're, those spidey senses are going up, you're not quite sure what to do, ask for help. I think of this as iron sharpening iron, yeah. right? We're just sharpening each other. We're hoping that you will use Matt and I as the iron to sharpen your own skills and help your paramedicine grow to new and higher levels. So thanks for joining us. Again, let us know if you like this and uh, look for the next video coming to you soon. Coming to you from Station 19. Thanks, Dr. Maynard. All right. See you next time. See you next time.